everyone. So what I thought we'd do today is I wanna show you my technique for training my horses how to lunge. So I've actually gotten this request from a lot of people. I've shared videos on how you yourself lunge your horse, but I haven't shared any on how to teach your horse how to lunge. So today, that's what I'm gonna be going over. Before we get started, it's very important that before you teach your horse how to lunge, you understand how to do it yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and link to those two videos in the description. And one is lunging your horse on a lead rope or a lunge line, and the other will be how to lunge your horse in the round pen. So you can check those out. So really quick, let's cover what lunging is. So lunging is getting your horse to move out and around you on a circle, whether they're on a lunge line or maybe in a round pen. And so this is great for a few different things. Number one is getting your horse to work around you. This can help them burn energy if your horse seems a little fresh. And I personally like to use lunging for groundwork. It's a great way to just communicate with your horse and get them to work around you. So let's talk about what you'll need to teach your horse how to lunge. So instead of using a lunge line, I'm gonna go ahead and use a lead rope and a halter. And just because as I start to teach them, I wanna make sure that I have good control and that's why I'm gonna use a shorter rope. And I'm also gonna use a lunge whip. And this is just to communicate to the horse. It's gonna help me give my cues and aids to help the horse understand what I want. So if your horse has never been lunged before, it may be difficult for them to understand that they're supposed to move out and around you and go forward. A way to tell if your horse is confused is that they may just take a few steps and then turn back to look at you or they may just be confused on that they're supposed to move forward. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you guys today is what I do with my horses to teach them how to go ahead and move out and around me and move forward. So before I show you guys I want to talk about the different levels of pressure I'm going to be using. To get Tucker to walk out what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my lunge whip behind him and ask him to move forward. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start by asking with a light pressure, which is just gonna be me tapping the lunge whip on the ground behind him. And if he responds to that and he just steps even one step forward, I'll go ahead and stop and reward him. If he doesn't respond to that, I'll increase my pressure to like an aggressive wave and slapping the ground and you can see he's already moving away from it. If he doesn't respond to that, then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to tapping him on the rump. I don't have to do a hard tap, I can just do a light continuous tap and that's gonna be my hardest pressure. And if I just keep doing that, usually the horse will eventually step forward because they don't like that pressure. So how I'm gonna position myself is I'm beside my horse and now I'm gonna use my lunge whip to communicate my aid to step forward. So I'll point my lunge whip towards their hind end or towards the ground behind them. And I'm gonna start with my lightest pressure, so just tapping. And as soon as he steps forward, I'll release that pressure so he learns that that was right. So I'll do it again, and he'll walk, good boy. And I'll just go ahead and ask him to stop because Tucker knows how to lunge. I wanna get that ability, so I just have to kind of wave this behind him, and he'll move. So you guys saw the light pressure that I used with Tucker. All I had to do is kind of wave my lead rope behind him really lightly. So if your horse is more reluctant to move forward, we talked about the other pressures you can use. You can wave more aggressively, if they don't respond to that, then you can move up to tapping them on the rump. So what I just wanna say about that real quick is you can see that I'm positioned next to my horse's shoulder more so. So that way, if I'm tapping him on the rump and he doesn't like it and maybe he kicks out, he's not gonna get me. <laughs> so what you wanna do is just a continuous light tapping until the horse moves forward. So you can see with his head, he doesn't really, like he's listening to what's happening. And so even if he just takes kind of one step in the beginning, I'm gonna stop and reward that because I want him to know that that's what I want. I want his feet to move when I do that. So I'll do it again. Good boy. See, he just moved his foot. And so eventually, I want you to move forward. So I'll keep tapping. Forward. There you go, that was forward. So if your horse doesn't respond to the light pressure, always start with the light pressure, then go to the medium pressure, and then go to the tapping if they don't respond to that. Good boy, so he got one step. So I'll do light pressure, and then he walks forward. He's a little bit more responsive to the light pressure. Another aid you can start correlating with your pressure is when I tap to ask him to move forward, <laughs> I'm gonna point with my arm that's holding the rope. So it will be like this, 
and see, he knows to move forward with that. So I use that as a change of gait. If I want him to go faster to the next gate, I'll point and see, he knows that that means to go forward. So when you want to start getting these subtle cues that you can give your horse to get them to move forward, this is a great place to start. So I'll show you guys point to walk and then I can point and he'll trot. And so that just means less reliance on the lunge whip, which is what I want. So in the beginning, what I do is I reward my horse for even taking one step forward when I ask them to, but eventually I'm gonna just keep asking them to move around me and take more steps. And you just do this by applying more pressure. You'll just use the same cues. As soon as the horse moves forward, you can release the pressure. And so this way they're gonna start learning to move around you on the lead rope. So once I've gotten the horse really comfortable at walking on the lead rope and walking around me in a circle, and I feel comfortable that I have good control, that they're willing to go forward, then I can ask them to go to the next gate. And so I'm just gonna use the same cues to get the horse to go faster into the trot, where I'll tap the ground lightly behind them in the beginning. And if they don't go into the trot from there, I'll wave the lunge rope a little bit more aggressive. And if they don't respond to that, I can go ahead and tap them on the rump. Just a quick side note, but that's something that's really important, is that I like to spend a lot of time just getting my horse to walk on the lead rope or the lunge line. And the reason I do this is because I've seen that a lot of horses learn that they can just gallop around like crazy to lunge. They think that lunging is just a time for them to burn their energy, buck, gallop around and go crazy. I don't want that behavior, so I focus a lot on keeping them calm and just having them walk on the lead rope or the lunge line. And so that's a little bit more difficult. You may be asking, well, how do I keep my horse just walking if they want to trot or canter? So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can do that. So once you have your horse moving forward, you may come to the conclusion that the horse doesn't understand when you want them to stop. So you may be wondering how you teach them to do that. So I'm just going to show you real quick. Good boy. Stand. So that's how I do it. And I'm gonna talk you through how you can teach your horse to do that too. So what I just showed you guys is what I like to call pressure ahead. So I'm applying pressure ahead of the horse in hopes that they're gonna stop or yield to that pressure. So this is a hard concept for horses to learn initially. It is against their instinct to stop at something when it comes like this towards them. The reason for that is in the wild, let's say a predator is coming this way and is trying to block their path of escape, the horse is gonna try and shoot through that narrow passage. And so I learned, that, <laughs> I've noticed that when I do this with a lot of young horses in the beginning, the first time I ask for this, they'll usually like shoot off through and like go into a canter and try to get past the pressure. So what I want my horse to do is yield to it. I want them to either stop, or if I apply a little more harder pressure, they'll turn around. So let me show you guys how I teach them to do this. So as you guys can see, I've positioned myself kind of ahead of Tucker here. And I do this because I don't wanna be in the drive line, which is in the middle of the horse. And if I stand right here, I'm pushing him forward. So I wanna make him slow down or stop. So I'm gonna stand in front of him. And what I want him to do is I'm gonna use my lunge whip in front and I want him to yield and turn this way. So he's gonna turn towards me and away. And so we're gonna use the same concept of pressure in terms of I'm gonna start with a light wave, then I'll increase the wave, and then I can really smack the ground if he just isn't responding at all. But Tucker here will respond. So I'll stand here and I'm gonna wave this until he moves away. Good pony, good pony. So I'll do it one more time so you guys can see. I'll wave, good boy. And to help your horse understand the concept, you can bring the lunge whip closer to them as you wave, and that can be looked at as an increase in pressure too. So I'll start my light pressure, and I don't want him to back up, I want him to turn. There, there. So when I did this at a standstill, Tucker learned how to yield away from the pressure by stepping around and to the side. So when I do it at the walk now, I can either ask him to stop by using a lighter pressure, or if I want him to turn around, I can use a harder pressure and bring the lunge whip towards him. So I'll go ahead and show you guys at the walk and I'll show you both instances and I'll talk you through maybe what your horse will do the first time they're faced with this. Okay, so I'll just have Tucker walk here. And what I'm gonna do, he knows what I'm gonna ask him because he's looking at me. I can just step and put this in front. Good boy. And then I'm just gonna have him back up because I want him to stop right there and not come towards me. All right, and then I can ask him to change direction. Good boy. 
hold them in and keep them walking. Good. And so this is kind of a game you can play with your horse. I just get them to stop and then I can change direction. And then I'll have them halt. But notice when I'm asking him, I'm taking a step in front and then putting my lunge whip out. So I'm, I'm also helping him learn how I'm communicating with my body language. Okay, so not every horse is as passive as Tucker. So what happens when I go to ask my horse to stop and they just run through the pressure? I've had this happen a few times. So I'll go like this and the horse will just immediately shoot forward into a faster gait, trying to get past that pressure. So what you can do is number one, work on the walk until your horse feels confident to go to the trot. Cause this is the gate where we're really gonna solidify what we're asking. But one thing I can help the horse with if they wanna shoot past the pressure, I can pull their head towards me and then use my crop to ask them to move. And that way they're just learning to understand and stop. So if I have a horse that wants to shoot past me, I can pull their head towards me and use my lunge whip. And even if they just step towards me, I can have them stop and then I'll have them move on. Walking though, Tucker, walking. So now that I've covered the basics of how I teach my horses how to lunge, I wanna share some, I also wanna share two very helpful exercises that I also work with them on. And these exercises are yielding the shoulders and yielding the hind end. And I find that when you teach these to your horses, it helps your horse understand what you want from them a lot better. So we'll cover yielding the shoulders first. So yielding the shoulders is when the horse moves their shoulders away. And they're really gonna do this by stepping their front leg one over the other. So there's gonna be a crisscross. So you may have noticed that the horse was doing this when we asked them to yield to the pressure ahead. I'll show you guys, watch his front feet. He crosses one in front of the other. And so when we teach our horses to yield the shoulders, this is really just gonna help them understand that concept and be able to move a lot easier in the opposite direction. So the first step I take to teach my horses this, I found that I wanna get them to move away from pressure. And so I just make a pressure with my hand. See how he moves his head away? So what I do, I bring my hand up to the eye and I make a pushing motion. And this is gonna act as a wall and pressure coming towards him. And in the beginning, if your horse just moves their head away like that, you can release the pressure, because that was right, they're moving away. And then I can walk forward and step towards him to get him to step away. So I'll show you guys again. I'm gonna push with my hand and step towards him using my body language to ask him to start stepping his front legs over. So I'm stepping, I'm stepping. I'm gonna keep stepping till his head, until he turns. So you wanna be sure you're stepping towards his head. Even if he has turned his head to the other side of him, I'm gonna keep stepping and applying that pressure until he steps around. So, and if he puts his head up, I can put my hand up and I can just keep doing this. There we go, good boy. So now that Tucker knows how to yield his shoulders, I can play a game with him that's just gonna be like applying pressure ahead and getting him to move away with those shoulders. So I can stand in front of him and wave my crop at the shoulder, I want him to move away. Good boy, uh, uh, uh. back up. I'll do the other one. So this exercise is great for getting your horse to move away from you and out on the rope. And it's also great for getting your horse to change direction and yield to the pressure ahead. The next exercise is yielding the hindquarters. So what this is, is I'm just gonna do the same exact thing I did with the shoulders. When I apply the pressure, the horse will move their hind end away, stepping their hind legs one in front of the other. So the reason I like to do this exercise with my horses is because I find when you first teach a horse how to lunge, they're gonna be pulling on the lunge line or the lead rope a lot and really testing the boundaries. And you may even get dragged. So I've been dragged before when I've been lunging and I don't like that. So when I can yield the hind quarters, this is also called disengaging the hind end, I have the ability to kind of take that power away from the horse to launch themselves forward. So all the horse's power comes from their hind end. And so if I can control that power, I can keep the horse from dragging me off. So like I said earlier, what I want is to see the hind legs cross one in front of the other and the hind end to move away from me when I yield the hind quarters. So the first step I take when I teach this, Tucker's trying to eat my ponytail. <laughs> the first step I take 
is I'm gonna apply pressure by bringing my lead rope up to the withers. So I'm gonna bring my hand out and back and I'll stand at the withers. So out and back towards me like I'm pulling towards the withers. And as I do that, I'm going to walk towards the hind end and apply pressure. So you can see he already stepped away. So when I pull and step towards the hind end, you can see he's stepping his back legs one in front of the other. Good pony. So if you have a horse that's really pulling on the lunge rope or the lead line, and maybe they're trying to drag you off, you can use this exercise to get them back in control and to keep from dragging you. So let me show you guys real quick. So what I'm gonna do is, it's the exact same motion. So I'm gonna wanna move towards the horse's hind end, but also apply pressure up towards the withers with the lead rope. Let me wait for him to get around so y'all can see. So I'm gonna reach my hand down the lead rope as I walk towards his hind end and pull his head towards me. So I pull his head and he steps around. Good boy. Pay special attention to how I step towards his hind end. So I'm gonna pull his head towards me and step towards his hind end to get that hind end to swing away from me. So if your horse is starting to maybe drag you, if you can do that really quick and get their head turned around, you're gonna turn that power off and keep them from doing that. If you have a horse that's just maybe really pulling on the lunge line, then you can use the same concept, but still send your horse forward. And so you're gonna get the horse to bend around you, but their hind end is gonna be moving away from you and that's gonna keep them from pulling. So I can try to demonstrate, it's a little bit more complicated. So what I can do is step towards the horse's hind end but keep sending them forward with my cues. So I'm gonna do this by kind of applying pressure to the lunge line and stepping towards his hind end. So you can see he's really turning his head towards me and I can use my lunge rope to keep him going out and I can move towards. And so if he starts pulling on me, I can do just that. So a lift, get him to move that hind end away. Good boy. So what I find when I work with my horses on lunging is once I've taught them the basics, they can pretty much apply it themselves anywhere I go. So even if I start on the lunge rope or the lead rope and then I go into the round pen uh, and I don't have the halter in the lead rope, the horse can understand what I want from them. And I'm really just gonna be using my body language to communicate in there. So if you wanna check out a little bit more about lunging your horse in the round pen, once again, go see that video in the description. So if there are any specific horse behaviors or situations you find yourself in that you wanna know how to correct, comment down below and we may do a video about it in the future. If you got anything out of this video, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.